Father, we give you the praise and the honor because you are an awesome God. Thank you for this time, Spirit of the living God. This is your session, Holy Spirit. Open our eyes of understanding. Give us revelation knowledge. Give us insight, my Father, on kingdom wealth. Give us understanding on how to create generational wealth. My Father, you have said in your word, the rich will always rule over the poor. And Daddy, our assignment is for rulership and dominion. Meaning without riches, there is no proper dominion. There is no proper establishment of the kingdom without wealth. Lord Jesus, you became poor so that you can unlock us into riches and wealth. I pray, my Father. This morning is a time of destiny, it's a time of encounter. Let eyes open. Holy Spirit, you told me, until something is revealed, it does not belong to you. My Father, reveal the understanding on kingdom wealth. Reveal, my Father, how to create it. Reveal, Lord God Jehovah, how to set systems. I ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on, you can give God a clap offering as you take your seats. So, let's see with the time that I have, how much we can push. I have up to 11.45. Awesome. Now, you must understand, with the time that is there, that's about 11.45. This is roughly about 50 minutes. So, I'll push to try to bring, if I try to teach systematically, you will not, there are too many things. So can I just talk? Because like that I'll flow. Talk to me. Can I speak? Let wisdom just flow. How many first of all here want to be wealthy? Because I have to know my audience. vow of poverty. Let me see again. How many want to be wealthy? You really want to be wealthy. Okay, I'm speaking to the correct audience. Now, let me start with, first of all, dealing with misconceptions. I'm talking about kingdom wealth, and under kingdom wealth, I will try to deal with creating generational wealth. But first of all, let me try to deal with some misconceptions. I know some of you, even as you are lifting up your hands, uh, you have some reservations. I know you coming here is a bold statement. Because if you didn't want to become, we were, we were chatting with El Damwale before we came here, that if this was a prophetic ministry and deliverance meeting, to come to receive, we are breaking the, what your father left that was holding you down. This place would have been packed up to the end. If we were dealing with the, Releasing you from your village. <laughs> uh, you don't know how bewitched the church is. One thing you must understand about the devil is this. He's a deceiver. He doesn't mind you being busy as long as you're not going anywhere. He does not mind you with a lot of activity doing things, as long as you are going nowhere, it is not affected. Doesn't it surprise you that there is an attack on wealth and the church? Doesn't it surprise you that there is a reaction that has gone across when it comes to the church having money? It's okay for Ronaldo to get 200 million. It's okay for Francis, the one who's fighting today with the Tyson Fury, to get 10 million, one fight. It's okay. It's when a church has one million dollars that it will be broadcasted everywhere. They are not taking care of the poor. Why are you not going to Ronaldo to tell him that? Tell somebody to say, today is today. <laughs> tell somebody, today you get understanding. So, listen, a lot of people who don't have understanding are being used by the devil because the devil knows as long as you don't have money, you cannot push the gospel. As long as you don't have money, 
there is nothing you can do when it comes to kingdom business. The gospel is free, very free. And I know people in church love to say, freely you have received, freely give. I wish you knew that to build this place like this, it was not free. I wish you knew to say the delivery of the gospel, to package someone, to send someone, for someone to be able to impact people, it's not free. So, there has been an attack, and I'm dealing with misconceptions in my few minutes, because I want you to want to become wealthy and not be apologetic. Have you heard what I'm saying? You must want to become wealthy and not be, not be apologetic. Because the devil has played a number on the church. Very few people in the church want to be millionaires, want to be billionaires, want to really have wealth. Why? He has been bashing them, hitting them left, right, and center to the place now where that some people even in the church are afraid to talk about money. And the enemy is the only one who's winning with that agenda. Everywhere they're talking about money. Everywhere they are creating systems to create more money. Everywhere they are adding and putting money to have agendas, to bring strategic plans to fulfillment. It's only in the church that the devil does not want that to happen. Tell somebody the devil is a liar. Tell somebody the devil is a liar. So that's one of the misconceptions. The attack on the church. The attack on the wealth. So that people don't talk about money. So that people don't think wealth. So that people don't go into it. Let the church be poor so that it doesn't have the voice. Tell somebody, I'm tired of being a wise, poor person. Trust me, everything I say is Bible. I might not open scripture, but everything I say is Bible. I don't speak outside the word of God. Tell somebody, I am tired of being a wise, poor man. The Bible says... The words of the poor man are no longer heeded. So, the devil does not mind you having wisdom. Ah, power, power. The devil does not mind you having power. As long as you don't have money. He doesn't mind all those things. Why? He knows. Tell somebody money is the answer for everything. Tell somebody money is the answer for everything. Now, tell somebody, money is not everything. That's what I've written on that scripture, Ecclesiastes 10, 19. If you read my, on my Bible, I've written, money is not everything. On the other side, I've written, but money is the answer to everything that you need. So if you need things, you need money. But money is not everything. <laughs> Are you hearing what you're hearing? If you have to move anything, you need money. Now, the misconceptions that have been there about wealth and riches have destroyed a lot of people's desire to want to go into it. Why? Most people have seen a person when they are poor, when they are average, and they've seen them when they've had a little bit of change here and there. And they've seen the sudden, sudden change in character. And that has made people be skeptical and fearful. Worst of all, the church has propagated the scripture in Timothy, the love of money is the root of all evil. <sighs> Why didn't we propagate the scripture, Jesus became poor so that we become rich? Why didn't we push that scripture? Why didn't we push the scripture in Revelation chapter 5, which talks about the seven redemptive packages from verse 11 and verse 12, which speak about Christ was slain, the lamb was slain to receive power, to receive wealth, to receive wisdom, to receive blessing, to receive honor, to receive glory and praise. Why didn't we propagate such scriptures? Why did we have to go and take a scripture that limits us? Actually, look at somebody in the face, tell them, so when you are broke, you do a lot of evil. Come, come on, tell somebody, today we, we have got short time, so we must be fast. Tell somebody, when you are broke, you do a lot of evil. After I look at somebody, tell them, say, when you are broke, that's when you sin a lot. Tell somebody, so, tell somebody, when you don't have money, 
you do a lot of evil. Are we changing the misconception? Don't confuse yourself. Say, no, the love of money is the root of all evil. So, we should... Yes, money should not be the center. And that's why I'm teaching kingdom wealth. Because in the church, there's been a gospel that has been pushed. But that gospel, unfortunately, raises greed. We have had a prosperity gospel that has raised greedy people. And that is the gospel that has even allowed the bashing that has come up in the body of Christ. Because we raised greedy people. We did not raise kingdom people. In the kingdom, everything belongs to the king. Write that down. It's a different understanding. In the kingdom, everything belongs to the king. In the kingdom, everything belongs to the king. So, when you talk about wealth, and you're talking about kingdom wealth, the basis, the premise from which you spring, the understanding that opens you for God to empower you with wealth, is this. In the kingdom, everything belongs to the king. If you don't have that understanding, you are supposed to remain poor. Money has got a power. That if you don't have understanding, it will bring an animal out of you. A little bit of the scriptures. Look at Psalms 49. Psalms 49. What we can read, we'll try to read. The others, I'll just recite them. Psalms 49 verse 20. Psalms 49 verse 20. Listen to what the Bible says. People who have wealth but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. I want you to drink into that verse. People who have wealth but lack understanding are like a beast Tell somebody you can have wealth without understanding and the wealth will destroy you. Listen to the scripture. People who have wealth but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. So what you have been fearing about wealth is what you are reading today because you saw a beast. Pastor Manasseh, uh, can we really become wealthy? Can we build empires? Can we build dynasties? Yes. But I saw a pastor have money. I saw a deacon have money. I saw an elder have money and he stopped coming to church. I saw someone have money and he divorced his wife. I saw someone have money and the money took them out of church. Listen to the scripture again. People who have wealth but lack understanding are like Beasts that perish. When you get money without understanding, you turn into an animal. Some of you have seen animals chasing little girls. <sighs> Tell somebody, say, thank God you came. We have been delivered from a beast. Tell somebody, you are getting understanding today. So you will never function as a beast. Hear me, when you don't have understanding, money is a spirit. The spirit of money is called mammon. When that spirit gets hold of you and you don't have understanding, you become like an animal. Those are men who will be with their wife for 20 years. And after 20 years of marriage, they will walk out and take a young girl. Those are people who have been in church all their lives. The church has mentored, raised them. The day they have a breakthrough, they walk out on church and they say, I'm too busy now. Tell somebody beasts. Tell somebody beasts. 
So when you don't have understanding, and hear me, it's the beasts we've seen that made us fear wealth. Because you saw a person in church, and then you saw them have money, but you saw them change. Tell somebody, money is neutral. Tell somebody, say, money takes on the character. Tell somebody, money takes on the personality of its possessor. So hear me, if you are here right now, and you have always wanted to chase little girls as a man, but you have not had the ability, you have not had the access, you have not had the empowerment to chase them. You look as if you are a normal man until you have money. When money comes, unfortunately, what people will see, they will see the money not seeing that you were always an animal, but you didn't have expression. If you don't get understanding, hear me, money will expose you. Why? Money gives you power. And that power to do things, that power to do... Open Matthew chapter 20. I want to show you what's the power. Money gives you power. Our Lord Jesus was giving a parable about the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 20 from verse 1. You can read the parable in your own time. I just want to read the end part where he shows the power of money. Verse 15. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 16. But I'm just getting verse 15. Matthew chapter 20, verse 15. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? When you have money, you have the right and the power to do what you want. When you have money, when wealth comes, when riches come, for the first time you will feel the power to do what you want. And I pray here we don't have Solomon's. The era of Solomon was everything... I saw, I desire to have. Tell somebody, you're not supposed to desire everything you see. That was the error. Read Ecclesiastes chapter 2. The error, the failure of Solomon is that everything he desired, everything he saw, he desired and went to get. And the wisest man of his time, the wealthiest man of his time, ended up as a useless man. Because when the power of wealth came, he now discovered that he had the right and the power to do whatever he could do. Tell somebody, I'm getting understanding. Tell somebody, I'm getting understanding. So, have we dealt with the misconceptions? I have to move quickly. Have we dealt with the misconceptions? We know money is neutral, isn't it? It's not the money that is evil. The person is the one that is evil. They never had expression. So when money comes, when they don't have understanding, they do what you see them do. It's not the money. People see the money that came and what they did after. It's not the money. The money amplified. The money exposed. The money gave a platform for what was inside. So that's a misconception you must deal with. Because whatever you don't respect, whatever you don't value, you can't attract it. If you have ill feelings about wealth and money, you can't attract it. Now, in dealing with understanding kingdom wealth, remember I said a statement, in the kingdom everything belongs? Talk to me. In the kingdom everything belongs? Let's look at where that is coming from. Let's start with John 17, then we sit in Luke John 17, verse 10. Are we in John 17, verse 10? 
John chapter 17, the king is speaking. Our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. So in the kingdom, and that's why when you read it in Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things. It must first be about the king and his kingdom. Then he can give you anything you need because it's kingdom based and it's focused to kingdom advancement. Anything you get outside kingdom will destroy you. And these are the wealth and riches that have destroyed people in church. Because they got it outside the understanding of kingdom. So when the money came, instead of advancing the kingdom, they advanced personal ambition. When the money came, instead of building the kingdom, they built themselves. They built even Babylon. And they built wrong things. Look at Luke, who we'll sit there. I love Luke 12. You, you see, if people could read the Bible more, you will find that the Bible is a very deep book when it comes to wealth. By the way, what happened to us? Follow. Abraham, our covenant father, whom God started with, wealth. Genesis 13. Are you following me? Abraham, wealth. Isaac comes through. Isaac, wealth. Genesis 26. Jacob comes through. Genesis 30. Wealthy. We call them our patriarchs, our covenant fathers. Look at Job. Look at Daniel. Look at Joseph. Look at David. Look at Solomon. Why is it that the people we look up to in the Old Testament are all wealthy people? Then unfortunately you find a charismatic pastor who tells you that the Old Testament is not important. So where you are supposed to learn the principles from, you leave it behind. You will see as I conclude today, I'm going to give you a technology for wealth. And hear me, it's not in the New Testament. The technology for wealth is not in the New Testament. The understanding of why the wealth must come is in the New Testament. But the practical system to produce the wealth and how it's supposed to flow is in the Old Testament. Jesus in the Gospels tried to reintroduce it over and over, but most people did not pick it. Are we in Luke 12? Luke 12, I'll start reading from verse, let me start from verse 13. Luke 12, verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide his inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you. Then he said to them, Watch out. Tell your neighbor, watch out. Come on, tell somebody, watch out. Continue speaking. Tell somebody, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Continue talking. Tell somebody, life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And that's why I say that we were told the gospel that is wrong. Because they told us, come to Jesus, he will prosper you, come to God, he will bless you, you will get this, you will get this. So we came to church to get things. And Jesus is saying here, Watch out against all kinds of watch out against all kinds of greed. 
Watch out against all kinds. Tell somebody greed has got different kinds. Tell somebody, some people it takes them to shoes. Tell somebody, somebody it takes them to the stomach. Tell somebody, some, some women it's wigs. Tell somebody, some ladies it's clothes. Tell somebody, some men it's cars. Tell somebody, watch out against all kinds of greeds. Tell somebody, say, you've got two legs. Why do you have 50 pairs of shoes as if you are an octopus? <laughs> two legs. Two legs. 50 pairs of shoes. <laughs> Let me leave that. Somebody's already saying, this man, my shoes, leave them alone. We'll leave your shoes alone. <laughs> Oh my God, you must understand something. Poor people love to waste their life and resources on liabilities. They waste their money on things that do not grow in value. Poor people are good at looking good. Oh, tell somebody there's a difference between looking smart and being smart. Come on, look at somebody, tell them there's a difference between looking smart and being smart. Tell somebody, I know you heard that dress the way you want to be addressed. Yes. Come, come, people, I mean, I've been in the school of success for over 20 years. I know what I'm talking about. Talk to me. Preach with me. Let's interact. Tell somebody, I know you have been taught dress the way you want to be addressed. But that does not mean you waste all your resources on clothes. No. The Bible says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Then he brings in a parable. And please, I want you to follow this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. So already that tells you to say, every person who you ever see become rich, they have a ground where they operate from. There is no rich man who does not have a ground. For Bill Gates, it was software. That was his ground. The current guy right now, the Tesla guy, Elon Musk, electric cars. That's his ground. Jeff Bezos, he was into selling. He created the biggest online platform to buy and sell with Amazon. Jack Ma, Alibaba, he created the biggest platform. His ground was how to create a platform where small businesses could sell. Ask your neighbor, what's your ground? I actually asked him, do you even know you are supposed to have a ground? Tell somebody, every wealthy man, every wealthy woman has a ground. So, you must find your ground. That ground can be an industry. That ground can be a field. That ground can be goods that you go into. That ground can be services. Now, I don't want to go so much into services because... The person who is selling fritters at the corner is offering a service. But they are poor. The person who is running a barber shop is offering a service, but they are poor. There are two systems that run parallel in wealth creation. Value production in goods and services. Services, if you are going to run services, if you cannot automate your services, if you cannot create a system that creates multi-systems where what you are doing can be done in so many places, you will call yourself as a business person, as a person who's doing something, but you'll be a slave, self-employed, and dying to try to make a living.
Tell somebody, find your ground. Tell somebody, you need to find your ground. Let's push. He says, he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my bands and build bigger ones. And there I'll store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, please, I, me, myself, keep hearing that language. And follow how it will end up destroying him. Verse 19. I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, be merry. Verse 20. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? What you have prepared for yourself. What was the problem with this rich man himself? He did not have understanding about kingdom. So everything he was doing was about himself. How did I start on this journey for wealth? I was in a bank with someone I love, Prophetess Elfrida Faith. She was running an orphanage. No, no, she was running a school with orphans and less privileged children there, 150. She was feeding and taking care of these children from her pocket. Money had run out. She was in a bank trying to get a loan to run the school. I saw her pleading and pushing with this bank manager to get this loan. And the bank manager was doing his thing. Giving all manner of dodging and everything. Until finally she managed to get that loan, I remember. And we sorted out what we needed to sort out for that school. But I remember that night when I was with her in the bank. I was with her in the bank in the afternoon. In the night when I went home because I was broken. When I saw, follow please, because some of you, to show you why you've wanted to be wealthy but you've not begun. When the root is wrong, God will not release it. Most of the people want to be wealthy so that we can see them. So that we can see them. We can see them. You will never become wealthy. You will labor, you will sweat to be blown away. Once the root is wrong, the Bible says if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? As long as your foundation is wrong, you're going nowhere. I never entered into wealth because I wanted to become wealthy. I entered into wealth because for the first time, I was in a place where someone I love is doing something that is noble and I couldn't help them. And that is the night that I broke. I went home that night. I told my wife, I told her to say, listen, this cannot continue. I can't be in a place where I love this woman. I love what she's doing. But I'm as poor and I'm as struggling as she is. And she's trying to do something noble to push, to help, give better life. And I can't help her. That night I broke. It was that night that I made a vow. Watch this and reason with your own understanding. Have you seen that you've been in a lot of seminars and nothing has happened? Have you seen that you've been reading books and nothing has happened? Until you get angry, nothing changes. Anger is an emotion requiring direction. Until you get angry to say this cannot continue. There must be an end. There must be a change. Until you do that, hear me, I'm a teacher. You cannot break forth. It doesn't matter what you read. It doesn't matter how many seminars. It doesn't matter how they anoint you. It doesn't matter how they prophesy on you. Until you reach at a place where you break and you say this cannot continue, your deliverance has not come. That's why you see people attend sem conferences, seminars, read books, are in church, but they don't change. Because they don't reach at a place 
of getting annoyed and saying this cannot continue. I love what Dr. Mensah preached one time at Shiloh. Should have been Shiloh 2004. He preached about the blessing of Isu. In Africa, the blessing we need is the blessing of Isu. What is the blessing of Isu? After Jacob had gotten what he wanted to get, <laughs> when Esau went to the father to cry foul, this guy has dribbled me and everything. Don't you have another blessing? The father told him, so listen, blessing him, I've blessed him. The richness I've given him, the depth I've given him. So the, what I can give you is this. The day you become restless, you will break the yoke. You see, I'm, I'm concerned with the people you are poor, but you're acting as if you're okay. You are suffering. You are in, do you know that as long as you are poor, you are nobody? Oh, so, some of you are acting as if you're okay. L let me remind you. When you are poor, we don't respect you. And I'm using Bible when I say we. I'm using scripture. When you are poor... Oh my God. When you are poor, you are useless in the family. You are useless in society. People in church don't even want you. When you are poor, when you are poor, do you know that most poor men married for what they could settle, not what they wanted? Why do you think when a man becomes rich, they go for what they wanted? Okay. <coughs> Tell somebody, I reject poverty. Tell somebody, I refuse poverty. Hear me if you don't get annoyed. This attitude you have, as if poverty is your friend. Poverty is stronger than the devil. A poor person does not get visited by Satan. <sighs> oh, I wish you could have scriptures. Do you have all Bibles? Quickly, Proverbs 10, 15. What destroys poor people is not cases. What destroys poor people is their poverty. Wealth is a fortified city. Wealth is the city. Are you following me? Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. But, I'm interested in part B. But, Talk to me, but what ruins the poor? I thought you want to break cases. I thought in the village they beat drums for you. What do you think made people not to come for this session? Poverty. When you are poor, you see, they, oh my God, when you are poor, not having money in the pocket, that's the last level of poverty. You are poor in the minds. You are poor in perception. You are poor in your ability to listen. You are poor in your ability to work with your hands. You are poor in your discourse. You are poor in many areas before you are poor financially. When a person is poor that they don't have money, oh my God, they have been poor in so many places. You are poor emotionally. You are poor relationship-wise. Before you reach at the place where you are poor, not having money, you've been poor in many areas. Tell somebody I reject poverty. Tell somebody I reject poverty. Hear me, in case you are here and you are, you are busy allowing poverty to caress you as if poverty is your friend. When you are poor, hear me, you have no friend, you have no relative. When you are poor, you have nothing. There is no neighbor for a poor person. Give me Proverbs chapter 14, verse 20. Let's push this. Proverbs 14, verse 20. And I want you to read these scriptures. Because I told you I want to make some people annoyed today. Some of you are not annoyed. That's why you have been entertaining it. Now let's read the Bible. Can we read this? One, two, three, let's go. The poor... <laughs> so, follow... Poor people don't have, number one, a neighbor. I'm reading the Bible. No one wants to relate with a poor person. 
if you are poor, your neighbors have no. I'm telling you, in case you didn't know, at my phone, swam a breeze. Nima enda, nezna enda, swam a breeze, swam a kambako, nezna enda, you are poor. Oh. The poor are found, even by their neighbors. Why should they return the call to you? Why should they mind that you came through? You, they, they know you came to beg. What do they want to do with you? Give me 19. Proverbs 19 verse 4. Proverbs 19 verse 4. Don't forget the, part, the last part. The rich have many friends. My even in the last part, scripture that took up. The rich have many. Don't forget that. I might not deal with it, but don't forget that. Let's read this one. One, two, three, let's go. Wealth brings, but. So a poor man does not have a neighbor. A poor man does not have friends. Ah, Pastor Manasseh, I have no one to help me. You are poor. Ah, I need capital, Pastor Manasseh. You are poor. Ah, seven. Let's run. My time, my time is crying. Seven. Can we read this together? Now verse seven. Give us verse seven. Same chapter 19, verse seven. One, two, three, let's go. The poor man is shunned. How much more? Tell somebody, they, they have been avoiding you. Let's go. Though he pursues them with, they are. Nima tu masama yanga. Nepta kwa kunchito ati sariko. So follow me. When you are poor, number one, the poverty ruins you. When you are poor, you have no neighbor, you have no friend, you have no relative. How could you ever want to be poor? How could you ever accept poverty? Now, I know I'm speaking to new creatures in Christ. I know I'm speaking to people who know that Christ became poor so that they become rich. I know that. So, the richness that Christ attained for us is in the spiritual reign. I don't want it in the spiritual reign. I want to see you rich here. So don't comfort yourself say, Christ became poor so that we become rich. We are rich in Christ. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly reigns in Christ. Tell somebody you are making noise. Kuliakalipako was my aim. is from Muntu Akalipa. Kuliakalipako? That's the aim. Because if you don't get annoyed, you walk out that door the same way you came. Hey, that man can teach. The way he was opening scripture. Wasira, you go back to the same poverty. Do you know that poverty is the strongest spirit that the devil uses to keep people on the same level? Once you are poor, he knows you'll be rude. Why? You know Proverbs 22, verse 7. Can we see it? Maybe you have forgotten. Proverbs 22, verse 7. Proverbs 22, verse 7. Can we read this together? One, two, three, let's go. The rich do what? But you are born again. But you've got the Holy Spirit. But you're a new creature. The rich rule over the poor. Doesn't matter you're a pastor. Why do you think pastors can't even talk to wealthy people? When a pastor is poor and a member has got money, and that member checkers for the pastor, unfortunately his mouth has been checkered. His mouth is cut. He will never express himself fully. Because once he starts coming out strong, have you seen the way I'm preaching strong like this? If I'm poor, I can't talk strong. 
Because when you are poor, even when you are talking, you are calculating. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the rich answer harsh, but the poor are apologetic. Let's go back. Let's finish Luke, then we try to wrap up. Let's finish Luke. Luke 12. We are in verse 20. Luke 12, we are in verse 20. Let's read this again. One, two, three, let's go. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from, then who will get what you have? Give us verse 21. I want you to get the wisdom here now. Let's read all of us. One, two, three, let's go. This is for who? Anyone. Pastor. Just answer anyone. Pastor. Anyone. Member. Anyone. Born again. Anyone. Spirit filled. Anyone. Follow. This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich towards God. Kingdom wealth is about you being rich towards God. God becomes the source. And the purpose of the wealth is for the kingdom. Now, let me begin to wrap up. Let me now show you what, how do we create it. I've laid a foundation on, you need to understand the purpose of it. I was dealing with the purpose. Kingdom wealth is for the kingdom. Everything in the kingdom belongs to the king. So when God blesses you, when God begins to lift you, he will bless you in proportion to your understanding that he is the owner. The more you understand that it belongs to him, the more he gives you. Because he has a kingdom agenda. Let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, and let them have dominion. There is a dominion mandate. We are supposed to take over. We are supposed to colonize. We are supposed to establish the kingdom of God on earth. So God has got an agenda. He's looking for anyone who can align, seek first my kingdom, so that I can give you all things. Why will I give you all things? If the kingdom is first, then the all is yours. If the kingdom is not first, I can't give you all. Tell somebody kingdom first. Tell somebody kingdom first. So, we have read there in Luke. He says, listen. You must be rich. This is how God will treat anyone. So no one is exempted. Anyone. This is how God will treat anyone who's not rich towards God. So hear me. Once this foundation is established, you know to say kingdom wealth has its source in God. And has its purpose in establishing kingdom agenda. So you know that kingdom wealth is about being rich towards God. Once that foundation is set in you, hear me, God will give you any wealth. God will give you any idea. Because he's the center of what is going to happen. That's the foundation we were not given in church. What I'm teaching you, I didn't read from a book. God revealed this to me. I've been in the church for some time. I know what has been taught in the church. As long as the king and his kingdom is not the center, they are not the focus, the wealth will destroy you. The kingdom must be first. When the kingdom is first, the king and his agenda, his purpose, his will, then God can make us billionaires. We can build empires. We can talk about now generational wealth. Why? It is about the kingdom. Are you getting that understanding? Once this foundation, and that's why I can take much time to deal with this foundation, because if you have the foundation correct, your heart is correct, then now when you become connected to giving, connected to activation of what you need to do, it opens you up to so much. Amen? It opens you up 
to sow so much. Matthew, Matthew 25. No, 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 no. Matthew 25 will be too long for us. Just write it down. Matthew 25, verse 14 to, tw to 30. Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. And under that, just write this. Kingdom wealth is entrusted to you. Kingdom wealth is entrusted to you. But that trust comes, Matthew 25, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. 14. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. Now, when you have the foundation to say everything belongs to the king, then God now trusts you based on that understanding to give you wealth. This is where now it is more blessed to give and to receive. begins to ignite ideas. When you give, tell somebody when you give, you are blessed. Tell somebody that blessing is an opening of the window of the mind. Tell somebody if you are a giver and you are not a thinker, you are wasting your money. Tell somebody, after you give. You see, you remember Proverbs 10, 22? The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Come on, talk to me. We don't have time, so I'm rushing. You remember Proverbs 10, 22? The blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Do you remember Apostle Paul? The revelation that he got directly from Christ. It is more blessed to give. Acts 20. From verse 34, 35 coming down. Listen. It is more blessed to give. What did he understand about it is more blessed to give? There is something about giving. That's why the enemy has attacked giving. Oh my God. When you give, I have to read this. First Corinthians, no, 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 seven, second Corinthians chapter 9, give me verse 11. You need to see this. Second Corinthians chapter 9, give us verse 11. Second Corinthians chapter 9, give us verse 11. Can we read this? One, two, three, let's go. What? What's the first line? You will be? Why? As long as, don't forget, I wish you could start it from verse one. I don't have time. Read it in your own time. It is the giving. He's speaking about giving, about sparing, about generously, and that God is able to make all grace when you give, that he gives seed to the sower and bread. What God is saying is this. When you are a giver, what you activate is a blessing. When you give, God blesses you. Look at Proverbs 10.6. Proverbs 10, 6. Then I conclude with Genesis 34. Hear me. What I'm teaching, I'm crushing it. I think you can see what I'm trying to do. I, you, I can't teach in one hour things that I teach in five days seminars. I can't. I'm trying to compress it as much as I can. Are you getting this? So please understand and bear with me. Uh, 10, 6. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. This is what happens when you give. 1, 2, 3, let's go. What happens? What happens? When you give, blessings crown the head. But that crowning of the head 
It is an activation of your mind. The only thing is that instead of learning how to now use the mind, because hear me, what you call wealth, creating of wealth, it's not in the pursuit of the actual money. Ecclesiastes 5, 10 and 11. Ecclesiastes 5, 10 and 11. Let's read this together. One, two, three, let's go. Whoever loves, never has. Whoever loves, is never satisfied with their. This is. Now go, go what, what is actually meaningful? Next verse. Because if you're focused on money, you'll miss it. Can we read verse 11 now? Because verse 11 is where I was talking about now. The blessing. You need to activate your mind now. Can we read? One, two, three, let's go. As goods, so do those who... Pause, pause, pause. The problem is not money. The problem is that we don't have enough thinkers who can come with goods. There is already a market. Do you know that there are people right now who has got your money, but your product has never come? Give us the scripture again. I know we are wrapping up. Give us the scripture again. Because if you don't get this, this is the engine. This is the operating system. One, two, three, let's go. Slowly. As goods increase, so do those who tell your neighbor that the consumers are not the problem. Tell somebody the problem is in the increase of goods. I have to wrap up. I'm sorry. Come on. Stand. Stand, stand, stand. L listen, I'm telling you the honest truth. This that I'm teaching, we need time. We need time. We have not even gone into anything here, if you've seen. Last scripture. You must go home eating. It Genesis 34 verse 10. This is the technology around wealth. Genesis 34, verse 10. 1, 2, 3, let's go. You can. The land is. Open doors. And you don't understand that the land is open. Open doors, and you don't understand that until you leave, what that word "leave" in it is saying, "Be alive to what's happening." You must be so alive that you must know what was, what is, and what is going to be. You being alive is what creates you to be able to be at the current where you catch the current. Then, when you catch the current, what you are supposed to do is. Whatever you do is to trade. And the trading, every trading that does not end up in land, you will not create generational wealth. You don't keep your money in the business. You don't keep your money in the stock market. You don't keep your money. Your money must end up in the land, in properties. God bless you.